with all this stuff here. I'll clean up my area a little bit. Uh, what? what? What the heck? Let's go for it and let's see what happens. So, if you have been following along, this will be the last tutorial in our intensive thing. Now, everything that we've done so far, you know, you could have practiced a bunch of times. But, safe to say that if you've been following along, and you've understood that we've got lines, and lines come in different values, and lines can make shapes. That shapes uh, can turn into things, and we can shade areas that have different values in them. Once again, values of light, medium, and dark. Right? That we could use these shapes and values to create form. And we could actually predict how light was going to go with dark, medium, and light. And uh, finally, we could use those more complex forms to also make things. And once again, light is very predictable. Cool. Okay, knowing all that, you were able to maybe even use your observational abilities and make shiny things. And, you know, we could break it down that the shiny things looked really complicated, but if you just took certain areas and just followed the little shapes, the shapes that were made by the values, that you'd end up with a picture, right? Okay. And so now we're going to go ahead and draw transparencies. And not only is it things that are, you know, let's say glass transparent, but they also tend to be reflective as well, but not have as powerful of a reflection. So it's really pretty complex. Actually, this is one part where you should be really, really, you know, proud of yourself as a human being because you can perceive all this stuff and you can recreate it. Whereas um, if you're in my computer class, which is where you're going next, you'll find that creating glass is something that's really hard for computers. Oh, we can do it and, we, and it can look really good. But it takes a lot of computing power because glass does a couple of different things. It has reflection. Okay, we've got that. It has transparency. Okay, we've got that. But it also does something what's called lensing, which is the distortion of the images that are held within it or that are held beyond it. So anyways, but we can deal with all those things because we'll just break them down into simple shape areas with different values, and that's really all it comes down to. Okay, so that being said, we're going to go ahead and just do our rough drawing. So we'll see maybe something a little bit like this here to get my shape. I'm not going to worry about doing the all that fancy stuff on the top as far as that little checker pattern. All right, that's cool. Don't need to concentrate on that today. Let's just try and get things about where they should be. And, you know, I'm trying to draw light, but my hand, once again, is at a kind of a goofy situation, which might actually be good for you because I'm drawing darker than I would if I was just going for this on my own. Okay, keep it simple, Robert. Okay, simple sort of outlined shapes of what you're kind of seeing. Okay, here's like those leaves are. All right, here's where that handle is, you know, approximately. Okay, and done, right? Done. The first initial drawing should be super, super quick. Okay, and then we can check it, you know, angles, measurements, relationships. All right, so if I look at my angle here, and so check this here, obviously, check this here. Okay, pretty good. Check, you know, even this here, all right, this over here, okay, looking pretty good. Okay, checking, let's say, the angle between this leaf here and the bottom down here. You know, I can take a look at that, and then check over here. Okay, good, you see, one thing is sort of reinforcing another. I can look for relationships. So like, let's say I look for the edge of this glass is right towards the center of this flower. You can see right here. So that's a little relationship. I can see like, okay, the, the leaves here, they don't go very far into the height of the flower. 
simple things like that. Uh, let's see, any others? Well, I don't know. We can look for angles like this leaf here and how it lines up with the, the cap right over here. You could do your measurements too. So saying like, okay, so this is, let's say this is how tall the jar is. Okay, oh, okay, so about halfway is where the flower is. So we say like, okay, here's my jar. That's how tall it is. And if we go that, oh, look at that. So the rose is about, or the whole, you know, the same height as what the, the jar is. That's how you get accurate. And in my art class, we'll get more into that. But just remember these three things, right? Angles, measurements, relationships. And if you do that, you'll get a pretty accurate drawing. All right, so now that we've got that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sort of, you know, make our value map and see if we can do this a little bit. And as I do this, I want to concentrate on this rose first and sort of talk you through that a little bit because it looks so complex. But if you take something and you keep it simple, in other words, start with the outside shape of it, and then, you know, go with the, sort of like the major structure of it, and then go into the little details of it, it's actually not that hard. So once again, I've got my shape and it's looking pretty good and I can follow the contour lines around, you know, and get a pretty good summation of where these things are. All right, it's coming out this way maybe, down here. And cool. Okay, and so then I can say like, okay, well, what's going on? We've got this major sort of cup area here. So I'll start defining that a little bit. All right, and so then I can start breaking it down into individual groups or petals because there's, there's another little cup. You see that's going on right in here. So I'll break it down into that. All right, get this little petal here and this one here. This one right here, all right, so that's my cup within a cup. And, you know, I thought about choosing a different sort of, uh, okay, this comes right out here, um, excuse me, a different flower, something more like, oh, I don't know, a daisy or something like that, right? Um, because that's going to have some complexity too. But, you know, people tend to like roses, kids like roses, and so I thought, okay, I'll do a rose. And so, show you how that can break down thing into thing into thing. And so, we see here, and we're just about there. Uh, we got this one here, we got this one here, and then that's the cup. And then we've got these little petals that are coming out here. Alright, and this little petal that's coming out like this here, and yet another little shape going on right here. Alright, good enough. Anyways, so that we had, you know, a cup, surrounded by a cup, surrounded by a cup, and even things that went around that cup. So it's a cup and a cup and a cup and a cup. Anyways, and so that was the rose. If you break it down, not so hard. Okay, so now I can get maybe that little leaf that's right around it right here. And as I'm making it, maybe making those lines a little bit more jagged. Okay, because it's a little bit more jagged, those rose petals, or excuse me, rose petals, rose leaves. Okay, so a little bit more on the jagged side of things. Okay, and even I've got this whole mess of leaves. So breaking down this whole mess of leaves, same thing as breaking on the rose, you know, I've got my overall shape that I gave it when I was just sort of mapping out the area. But then I can look for major things like, okay, ooh, obviously there's this big old leaf right here, right? So I'll just draw this big old leaf right here and jagged sort of edge to it. And here, we're going to go ahead and get this one that's sticking out right here, and this one right here, here, 
Okay, and then I've got this other big leaf that's kind of right here. You can only see part of the leaf, but there it is. And over like there it is. And there's this other little leaf that comes forward off of the rows. And then finally there's this one that's going kind of out this way here. And okay, so I've got that whole little mess of leaves. If it helps, I could even put in the centers. And that will kind of show me, give me a guidance of which way things are going. Okay, and then the stem. Just that a little bit stronger. Okay, so now the top here are just ovals. Okay, so get it going. You know, often times in class I've, I've shown you about just scribbling an oval and you don't even have to touch the paper to do that. Right, so if I just get my hand going in that direction and talk about a, a line that is easy to erase, well, the line that you don't even make, that's that's the super easy one to erase. Okay, and so then we've got just kind of follow around and try and sort of get these things the way that they would go. Once again, I'm not going to worry about putting in that nice little pattern that's on there. But I do want to get this. Mm, ooh. Sometimes those sketchy little lines help because you get committed to a line. And like I say, with my hand position that it's in, it's hard sometimes to be as dexterous as I want. But by doing sketchy lines, you're not as committed. So that's why you'll see people sketching, you know, dut, 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 instead of going like whoosh in one long stroke because it's easier, because it's not as committed. Okay, so anyways, and as we go on down this jar here, okay, we can just sort of follow the line of this jar and... See, we can say like, okay, where's my darker value is going to be? Well, I can see there's sort of a darker value in here, you know, so like this area right in here. And then there's like, there's two, right? So I can see one and two. And so, got one that's kind of up a little bit closer, right up in here. Okay. And so then we've got sort of in this corner and we've got this stem. You see, that's what I was talking about with that lensing. You've got some kind of a reflection in here, whether it's a reflection or whether it's a, just a warping of the, all right, of the, of the little stem that's inside of it. But it's, in either case, it's creating a sort of a darker area here and maybe sort of a lighter area up here. I mean, it's darker, but it's also lighter than the other area that was next to it. Okay, here's where that stem was coming down. And, you know, my psychology says, oh, okay, stem, boop, you know, straight down, zoop. But it, it's not, right? If you really look at it, it's like it's all warped and twisted. And in fact, uh, the stem actually goes all the way, if you were to see this in person, all the way down here, right? But from my angle and with what's going on, you don't see that because there's all that re weird lensing that's going on in the glass. But that's what will make it look like glass, you see? So here is also sort of like another image of the stem right here. See, and it's totally weird, right? But just draw what you see. That's the important thing. Okay. Okay, so then I've got sort of like the water line right here. I've got water in here. And I did that on purpose because, you know, the water is going to change things, right? Because the water is like glass that's transparent and it's going to lens and it's going to reflect and do all kinds of weird stuff, right? once again, and then this is this sort of area right here that I'm drawing, right? Once again, just draw the shapes that you see. That's the important thing. 
Don't think of them as anything. Just think of them as darks and lights. Later on, when you're kind of cleaning things up and trying to make sense of things, then then think like think like as if you were viewing the art. Does it make sense to you, right? And that at that point, when there's so much of it already laid out, then perhaps then it's time to think of something as a thing because that's what your viewer is going to think of it as and make sure that it makes sense. But that's easier to do because you've already mapped out where everything goes, so all you're doing at that point is making corrections to things, right? So some areas are a little bit darker than others. I've got this nice little brightness at the bottom here, sort of. Okay, so much going on, so much going on. It's really cool. Okay, a little bit up here. We've got this area. Handle that comes down here. And this, which is, oh, this is going to be so, so light, this area here, but it's going to be contrasted by this dark area right here. So that's cool. There's another dark area on that handle. Okay, and then it's got stripes. And, you know, sometimes... Like I said, you don't have to totally follow things perfect, but you know, you could count. You know, when I'm seeing it here, I got okay, two lines, one, two, count. Right? If you were following me along on the one that I did about texture, there was that little part on the brush where it was in the ferrule of the brush and had a little pattern of metal stamping. And how many stamps did it have? Who knows, right? But count. Maybe maybe there were 20 of them. We'll count 20, and when you draw, draw 20 of them. It's just that easy. Okay. Making sure that those lines sort of make sense as I come together as a form. All right, so it's kind of curved and yet kind of square all at the same time. Okay. Good enough. And then let me see my shadow is coming off here. And transparent things, especially like things with a liquid or water or whatever, those are giving you some really, really cool shadows because they oftentimes have light in the shadow as well. Okay. Cool. So now I've got my my values all sort of mapped out. Here's a little environment to live in. And since I've got these all mapped out, then it's easy, right? Now it's just, now all I have to really concentrate on is dark, medium, and light. So let me see here, we got this subtle, subtle. Here's the other edge of it here. Okay, and does that keep going the way it does? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, cool. Anyways, and there might be little added things. Oh, I'm always seeing new stuff. New stuff all the time. It's cool. All right. Good enough. Is that good enough? Yeah, it's good enough. Okay. Yeah, because we'll, we'll fill in the details as we're creating those values, right? Okay, so we'll start with the rows here. And so, you know, I can see that, you know, I've got this beautiful light hitting it up towards the top. And... And it gets a little bit darker as it comes in, just sort of creating a form right there. But yet the rose too, it has some uh, translucent sort of quality here. Make that petal a little bit stronger. And so we're going to get in here. And this is where I might go ahead and edit a little bit because I'm going to be doing kind of like the same thing over and over. Just looking at each petal and just thinking, okay, well, where is it dark? Where is it light? And I think if I, you know, know that I'm going to edit, I can sit here and take maybe a little bit more time. Whereas if I think I'm going to be 
doing this straight through without an edit, oh, I'll kind of rush, and then it won't look good, right? So you can't rush. We're preparing you for your sketchbooks, and your sketchbooks should look like they took you, you know, an hour. Maybe they don't take you an hour. How am I going to know, right? But they should look like they took you an hour.